Okay, we're back here live inside the Cube, SiliconANGLE's flagship program. We go out to the events to strike the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE, and I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org. We're here with Marcel Komacher, who's the lead engineer for Cloudera, and specifically focused on one of the hottest products we've heard about, or features or capabilities, Impala. Um, welcome. Thank you. So you must be excited. You've been, I am. You've been hush-hush about Impala for I a while. I am very excited. We've uh, developed it for now well over a year and uh, have been wanting to talk about it, but uh, now is We've been poking at it, asking all these questions about how you're going to bring these worlds together. And Well, you know, we got our best people working on it, is what we were told, so now <laughs> <laughs> we're here. So congratulations Mar on it. Thank Marcel, you. Marcel, talk Thank about, you. Uh, so S Impala is your new announcement. We went to talk to Mike Olson about it and everyone else. We don't want to go into the whole, you know, messaging that your PR people are telling you to say. <laughs> and But Hammerbacher had a great talk about, you know, he's all lit, lit up like a Christmas tree. He's all passionate. But let's get into some of, the, some, of the, some of the conversations. So here at Hadoop World, you introduced it. Hallway conversations have been very positive. Um, people love it getting standing ovation, packed house at the session. Um, what is the rationale behind Impala for Cloudera from, from a technical perspective? Because I want to get into your background on Google a little bit, and Wired had a great story about you guys and uh, mentioning Google engineer, you know, that kind of thing. Press love to do that, but let's get into some of the practical matters of the product, sure. the platform. Let's do that. Um, so why is it important to Cloudera? Well, SQL in general is sort of the main conduit to data in the industry. And uh, we just felt like, I felt in particular that the existing solutions that were Hadoop native, which was Hive, was severely lacking, right? There was a very inefficient, uh, high degree of latencies associated with it. So I th thought it was uh, basically high time to develop a native uh, parallel query engine inside Hadoop. So this is basically what this is. This brings, uh, you know, parallel database technology to the Hadoop ecosystem. We just had a guest on, Camille Small Venus Enterprise, she's a geek and she's an alpha geek and she's, but she's in the, on the business side. And she was saying that the, the whole show is about Hadoop is now recognized that everyone has to at least deal with it and use it, it's practical and it's good. Goodness of Hadoop is everywhere. Um, and so it's evolving out into somewhat mainstream. Amr thinks it's not, won't be mainstream until uh, there's a VM world size conference, which is like 30,000 <laughs> people. But okay, maybe that's mainstream. Okay, that's fine. But let's talk about um, how we got here. So your background is at Google. You spent a lot of time uh, at Google working on some pretty big stuff. Uh, um, sp uh, Spanner, you worked a little bit on? I did not work on Spanner. You worked on Spanner, but you did uh, a lot of the query engine. Uh, I was did, I was the, um, the architect of the query engine component of the F1 project, which uh, has been published now, so I can actually yeah, mention yeah. it. So let's talk about that real quick, because that's okay. good context to kind of where we want to go. Sure, it is a uh, combination of an OLTP and an analytical system, and it uses the same query engine technology that is now available through Impala. So the basic technical approach is the same. Um, I don't know to what extent I can talk about the details of uh, Google internal technology. Come on, you know, you're on a roll there. I can, I can just see it coming <laughs> out. <laughs> Come on. Okay, I'll just simplify it for it. It's some serious, <laughs> fast, highly geeky code that works well on large systems. So it's large scale. Right. And you, you're dealing scale. with large scale stuff. I mean, so they just kind of leave it at that. Yeah. Just kind of oversimplify it. But so it's, it's some complex complexity involved. So Hadoop going real time is important because there's needs for slicing and dicing of data it and, and there's, some, there's some efficiency. So talk about one, the efficiencies that you solve with Impala, specifically with RTQ and some of the things you're doing in there. Of course, yeah. So um, actually contrasting it again with Hive, Hive uses MapReduce. It breaks a query down into a, uh, into a sequence of MapReduce jobs and all of these jobs have to materialize their output. So Impala, uh, sorry, uh, Hive generates a lot of um, I.O. in this process. Uh, Impala doesn't do that. Impala does not materialize intermediate output. Impala does process to process data communication. So you're circumventing um, a lot of the things that have made Hive very slow. So you're basically reducing the net uh, amount of processing that is happening to the minimum that is required in order to run a particular query. And you're also doing a full distribution, meaning uh, the data, the query runs on all the nodes that contain data that is relevant for the query, and they do as much pre-processing as possible, meaning they, they compute joins, they compute aggregations, 
and then send only the minimum amount of data <laughs> onto the other nodes where it gets combined, etc. So, so, so right Marcel, Impala is probably, you know, obviously less mature than you know the SQL that we know and love. What about yeah. things like um, um, uh, columnar storage and compression? Um, right. Where do they fit into your roadmap? They, they are absolutely complementary and they are on the roadmap. So um, we are already have been developing um, with Duck Cutting a columnar storage format called Trevni. And uh, that is outside of Impala in the sense that it is not tied into Impala. It's, you know, it will be also be available probably in Hive. And, but it's definitely on the roadmap for Impala and uh, probably also even for the GA. So this is definitely something that we need to do in order to uh, have the same, achieve the same efficiency that commercial analytical columnar database systems can accomplish. And, and GA's win? Uh, we don't have a date yet. Sometime early next year. Q1, we say Q1. Yeah, okay. So let me get, if I get this right. So the old way, you'd write a SQL query, it would get chopped up by Hive into MapReduce to run on Hadoop. Right. right, that's the old way. And, and the new way yeah. is what? The new way is, so the old way was one or multiple MapReduce jobs. The new way is it gets uh, turned into a logical query plan that then gets partitioned, and these plan partitions get sent out to the individual nodes that have the data. All of these nodes also run um, an Impala daemon that does all the processing and interacts with the local data. So it, it uses the most efficient path to read the local data and then does the in-memory processing. So is this the concept of you push things out to where the data is? Is that the yes, concept? exactly, that's that the concept. And that's an important concept because as more and more data actually comes out of main memory, right? So we're seeing much bigger uh, hardware configurations with much more memory a lot of the data will come out of main memory. And so the local processing is going to be much more efficient than taking the data and reading it remotely over the network, which is what some commercial competitors are proposing. So, so um, Hive is, uh, or, or Apollo is Hive compatible, yes? That, to, that, to a large extent, there are things that are missing um, that are in Hive that we don't have but yet. Conceptually, it's yes. Okay, conceptually, and, and so you're that's not persisting immediately to disk. Is that is not that at all? Or? No, okay. no, not at all. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So in that sense, it's it's similar. Um, and you, you, from a practitioner standpoint, it's uh, familiar. It uh, oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we we uh, made an effort to utilize the same metadata that you have in Hive, and also utilize the same uh, ODBC interface. So that's why uh, we're partnering with some BI vendors and they could immediately retarget against Impala. So, so what's the infrastructure requirements to run this? So like to manage the queries, it used to be heavily, you know, you obviously scale out a lot, of, a lot of scale, but it's not, it's just commodity hardware yeah. uh, in a good way. I don't mean, in our industry standard hardware. Um, but what's the footprint requirements? Does it reduce the footprint for the managing the queries? How, what's the impact of the query efficiency? relative right. to the infrastructure. It uh, actually does uh, reduce the I.O. footprint in the sense that it doesn't uh, materialize intermediate data and the Hive materialized intermediate data to disk, meaning it adds additional I.O. Um, requirements onto the system that Impala does not have. So you get to utilize more of your I.O. bandwidth for to actually get the data out rather than you know doing all the interviews. I wish stuff. David Floyer was here from Wikibon because we would be geeking out on oh some yeah. serious I.O. <laughs> conversations, but I'll, I'll try my best, David Floyer, to ask this <laughs> next question. So obviously in-memory databases are great. So as you have the in-memory movement with databases, it's great. Um, so you can do a lot with not a lot of compute, but you still need a lot of compute to go through stuff, to go through data, but okay, but so you have in-memory. If I add more stuff onto the, data, uh, the database, like interactivity and um, analytics, yeah. I then put pressure on the I.O. How do you guys resolve that? I mean, that seems to be a common question. Maybe I'm, I'm phrasing it wrong, but the notion is, okay, I got some compute, I'm maximizing my compute with my, my database, with in-memory, but if I want to add more, maximize the cores, I'll add analytics and more things on it. Right. But that also puts pressure on the I.O. constraint bottleneck. Well, I mean, in the end, it's always a matter of uh, finding a balance, right? If you're running a system where you're saying, the I.O. is overutilized, so where you're bottlenecked on the I.O., well then, either you should probably move things into main memory or you need to add more I.O. capacity. Um, Impala has been written to be very efficient in terms of uh, doing the processing of the data itself, the parsing out and the joins, etc. cetera. And um, so we put a lot less pressure onto the cores themselves which means that you can actually u fully utilize the available disk bandwidth. Let's talk about, let's talk about performance for okay. a second because the skeptics have been saying, oh, Impala, you know, the, the HDFS can't handle it. It's not uh, 
going to be high performance. So, right. one, talk about some of the skeptical comments that have been made about Impala. Okay. And then she talked about some of the performance benchmarks that you've seen. Just Charles, VP of product, told us that there's been some significant performances. Yes, um, so the uh, performance, so what we're actually seeing with uh, the recent improvements in HDFS that are present in CDH 4.1, and which is what we used uh, internally to test Impala, is that you can actually get full uh, the raw disk bandwidth out of the disks. So we're doing local reads, which means you're reading effectively from the local file system. There's no indirection through any data node processes, and we are getting in excess of 100 megabytes a second out of standard disks, out of standard SATA disks, which is you know as good as it gets. So, so that's that's a Hadoop integration uh, uh, challenge yes. that you've solved, correct? Yes, exactly. Thing? Hadoop integration and also uh, for Hadoop, for HDFS to expose the full disk bandwidth uh, that has been accomplished, meaning you, know, you can't go beyond the hardware, obviously. Now, won't you get an additional performance boost? Of course you will when you do columnar, right? Yes, that, you uh, will. Yeah, I mean because you further reduce. Hit, that's going to be a very big hit because you further reduce the amount of I/O you have to do. All right, so yeah. um, that's going to, and that's what all the commercial columnar storage managers so depend on. So, so obviously, so I'm trying to build a business case in my mind. So it's open source. So yes. it's I don't have to I don't have to pay for it. Right. Right. Um, it's simpler. Right? There's a one less thing to administer, presumably. Right. That's because it of the integration that you've done. It runs on the same hardware. And it's no faster. Second. And it's going to be a lot faster when you deliver uh, Trev Trevno? Yeah, Trev Trevney, Trevney, the Trevney, columnar Trevney. format, yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's okay. right, yeah. So if I had to do my little business case there, I could quantify that depending on my yeah, size, yeah. do my before and after, and boom, do the ROI. It should, I can't quantify it quite yet, but uh, it, should, it should. Call David Floyer, we'll be able to have do that. So, <laughs> I, so the, rumor, the rumor is that the, the name Impala came from you. Is that true? That is true, yes. So give us the history of, um, the, of, the, of how the name came from. What, uh, what happened was I was fishing around for a name, and um, I asked a colleague at work, Eli, and he threw out Eli some Collins, names. Eli Collins, that is. Uh, he threw out some names, one of which was Gazelle. And uh, I immediately thought Impala because I had lived in South Africa for a while. And uh, also I was listening to the band Tame Impala quite a lot at the time. So I'd like to plug them here. They just came out with a new album three weeks ago or something. So uh, <laughs> We're going to get sued you. for royalties on the cube. Uh, <laughs> uh, give attribution. <laughs> So yeah, South that's Africa where they eat Impala. They uh, <laughs> they probably do. Yeah, I've never had Impala actually. <laughs> but so uh, so <laughs> congratulations on all that. W Thank really you. awesome work. Impala's um, got some great buzz, and the whole Cloud Air team, which has a lot of smart people in it, are getting behind. Dusty Jeff is passionate about it. You you have a great track record what you've done at Google. But so I want to ask you more geeky questions to get your perspective on things. What do you think of the current database market right now in terms of some of the technical challenge, challenges that are being solved and some of the cloud-based uh, solutions that are rolling out with Hadoop? Because right now Hadoop still stands up better with bare metal on performance. It cloud does. is not really resonating well. Yeah, continuity's out there, you got Plat4 out there, but still you're still seeing it be specifically for data centers uh, and on-premise. What right. do you see as core challenges for folks that are engineering out there for around databases and whatnot? In terms of, you mean uh, engineers as the in the people who write the databases or the who utilize the no, databases? What are, what are the top uh, coders who are pioneering some of the enhancements in, in Hadoop working on relative to solving and scaling the next generation? Uh, well, I think there's, uh, I mean, what we're doing in the house, I can talk about that in more detail because I know more about it. I don't know really sure. what our competitors are doing. Um, yeah, just from your perspective no, as no, a geek. No, no, of course. I think um, definitely caching is going to be very important. Like I said, main memory is very important. And for Hadoop to utilize available main memory more effectively is going to be important. Right now it relies on the OS buffer cache, which is ineffective. And uh, there's going to be, there's a lot of uh, processing overhead associated with it because it does all the checksumming. Every time it reads something, even out of the buffer cache, it re-checksums the data. So it's very expensive. Um, you, if you're doing three-way replication, you need to have your data cached everywhere, basically three times in order to get the full performance benefit. So I think there's still a gap that will need to be bridged. Um, what do you think about coherency in the database? I mean, is it aging gracefully, not gracefully? Is it changing? Coherency in the, in in the database? Um, in, in what way, what do you mean? 
Just, <laughs> Dave's giving me the hook here. <laughs> um, any, qu my final question is, what's next for you now? Now that you get the project, we've got our next guest coming, so I didn't interrupt, but right. um, we'll move, we don't have time to go into the coherency. But final question, what's you, what's up next for you? What are you gonna be working on? Um, definitely continuing to work on Impala and trying to get into a real product. So there's right now we have a beta out, which is for something for people to try out. And uh, the goal is to turn this into a really useful, uh, basically query engine portion of a database system, right? Something that is has commercial quality and can compete with uh, commercial offerings. Final, final question. I have to ask you this, and I want you to uh, tell the people out there. Um, there's been obviously when you Cloudera does something this bold, there's going to be some fud from other vendors. But just tell the folks out there why Impala is the real deal and why it's so important. From your technical perspective. Right, yeah, yeah. It is the real deal because we are utilizing uh, standard parallel database technology that has been available commercially and has been very successful, right? It has demonstrated its ability to scale and ability to handle diverse workloads. And this is finally being available in the Hadoop ecosystem in a non-compromised way. And um, that's basically my Big data summary. platform, Mar uh, Marcel, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Congratulations. Thank you. Impala. Uh, maybe after a rock band, not a car, but uh, <laughs> great stuff, congratulations. This is theCUBE, we'll be back with our next guest after the short break. Uh, all the signal from, from the noise is right here in theCUBE, extracting that signal, sharing that with you. This is SiliconANGLE.com's theCUBE, we'll be right back after this short break. We lift out all the